Hi everyone! Today we are going to be learning how to identify a tree by using the scent of its twigs. Being able to identify a tree by its twigs is an awesome skill to have, especially in the dormant season when the trees don't have any fresh leaves or flowers present. Many different species of trees have aromas that they produce, and you can access those aromas if you grab a live twig off of a tree and scrape it until you reach the inner green cambium layer. Once you reach the cambium layer, you can give it a sniff and pick up that scent. Most of the species we're going to be looking at today are native to the central or eastern United States. However, there is one exception, but I'm going to be sure to mention it when it comes up. Alright, so here is our first twig. It's very thin and brown. And I may have lied to you a bit because this is actually from a shrub, not a tree, but I hope you forgive me. Can you guess which shrub this is from? This is from none other than Northern Spicebush or Lindera benzoin. If we take a look at the twig of Spicebush, we can see that the twig is thin, brown, and glabrous with lots of lenticels present. Additionally, we can see that the buds are imbricate, so the bud scales overlap like the shingles on a roof. There isn't much of a difference between the apical and lateral buds of this twig, but we can see that the buds are arranged in an alternating pattern, so that can help us out with identifying this twig. Spice bush can actually grow to be about 5 to 15 feet tall and can typically be found in rich forests, swamps, and on the shores of ponds. This species is decently tolerant to shade, so it can be found hidden in the understory where it is a valuable food source for wildlife. Alright, let's go ahead and scratch and sniff our spice bush twig, and don't worry, the rest of the twigs are going to be trees. So if we give it a sniff, it smells very spicy, like if someone was baking a pie in like the autumn time, all those nice autumn spices. Uh, it's definitely one that you want to like smell for yourself. It's a very nice smell. So something nice about spice bush is not only are the twigs very aromatic, but so are the leaves and the fruits. So I actually have a fruit of spice bush right here, and you can take the fruit and you can crush it and smell it and it's very weird it's a very weird smell it smells like oranges and black pepper like a little bit of a mix of the two it's very bizarre here we have our second twig and this one is a fantastic one for beginners because not many twigs look like this one this twig belongs to none other than the tulip tree otherwise known as liriodendron tulipifera now if we take a look at our twig from the tulip tree, we'll notice that it has an alternate bud arrangement as well as very prominent rings on it, which are the stipule scars. Both the apical and lateral buds on this twig are valvate, which means that the bud scales don't overlap, they instead meet in the middle. In fact, the only difference between the apical and lateral buds is their size with the apical bud being larger. Now a good way to remember how to identify a tulip tree is to think of the buds as having a duckbill shape. The tulip tree is a deciduous tree that can grow to be about 80 to 120 feet tall and can live up to 300 years when growing in ideal conditions. The wood of tulip tree is used as a source of lumber and unexposed furniture, and these trees are commonly found in parks as shade trees, but they are also incredibly valuable to wildlife. Alrighty, now let's scratch and sniff our tulip tree twig to see what it smells like. It smells a lot like spice bush, but a little less potent. Although, tulip tree might be a little easier to find than spice bush, so I might try out identifying this one first. Here is our third twig, which is pretty exciting, and you'll learn why in just a second. This dark twig belongs to none other than Prunus serotina, otherwise known as black cherry. Now, if we take a look at the stem, we may notice that it is dark reddish brown with an alternate bud arrangement, and it has some prominent lenticels. The buds are small, imbricate, and glabrous with not much difference between the apical and lateral buds. Black cherry is a deciduous tree that grows to be about 60 to 90 feet tall and can typically be found in forests, pastures, and old fence rows. The stems, leaves, and seeds of black cherry trees all contain cyanide, which is very toxic to humans. Even though it has toxic properties, black cherry still has tons of uses. For instance, many animals eat the cherries this tree produces, and humans are able to benefit from this tree because black cherry has some very sought-after wood that makes beautiful furniture. Additionally, cough medicine can be made from the bark of young trees. So as a disclaimer for this one, 
Sometimes the scent is very faint and you can't really smell it that well, but you really gotta be sniffing, so get your sniffer ready. So let's scratch and sniff this one. And it smells very bitter. Like some people will say it smells like bitter almonds, but I just smell bitter. So there you go. Prunus serotina just smells very, very bitter. Some people say that you can taste it as well as a way to identify it and you'll get that bitter almond taste. Uh, I don't suggest doing that because I'm not a fan of putting things in your mouth if you're not 100% sure what they are. But that's just my opinion. Here we have our fourth twig, which is the worst smelling one of the bunch. This stout twig belongs to Aeschylus glabra, otherwise known as the Ohio Buckeye. Now, if we take a look at the twig of Ohio Buckeye, we'll see that it is light brown with an opposite bud arrangement. It also has imbricate bud scales and is glabrous. The apical bud is much larger than the lateral bud and they're both orangish brown. There's not much difference between them other than size though. Ohio Buckeye is a deciduous tree that grows to be about 20 to 40 feet tall and can be found on floodplains, roadsides, and in pastures. All parts of this species are poisonous to humans and livestock, but squirrels love the nuts that Ohio Buckeye produces, oddly enough. Oh, Ohio Buckeye is also the state tree of Ohio, so go figure that. Alrighty, let's go ahead and scratch and sniff our Ohio Buckeye. Yeah, it smells vaguely like a skunk, like very vaguely. It's not it's not terrible. It's not terrible, but it it definitely isn't one that I would prefer. It's no it's no spice bush, that's for sure. Here we have our fifth twig, which belongs to the only invasive species that we're looking at today. This thick twig belongs to the tree of heaven, otherwise known as Alanthus altissima. Now, if we take a look at the twig of the tree of heaven, we'll see that it is thick, light brown, slightly pubescent, and has heart-shaped leaf scars. And it also has an alternate bud arrangement with the buds directly above the leaf scars. This twig is interesting because it actually lacks an apical bud. It only has lateral buds. The tree of heaven is a fast-growing deciduous tree native to China and Taiwan, but it is highly invasive in North America. This species grows so fast that it can grow 8 feet during its first year and reach 100 feet tall when fully grown. The tree of heaven is typically found in disturbed areas such as riparian habitats, on roadsides, and forest edges where it can form dense stands. Alrighty, let's go ahead and scratch and sniff our tree of heaven twig. So, a lot of people were saying that the Tree of Heaven twig smells like burnt peanut butter. Well, I don't think it smells like burnt peanut butter. I think it smells like dirty peanut butter. And that is a very odd thing to say that a twig smells like. But once you smell this twig, I think that you will agree with me. Here we have our sixth and final twig, which is one of my favorite species. This green twig belongs to none other than Sassafras, otherwise known as Sassafras albidum. Now, if we take a look at our sassafras twig, we'll see that it is green, skinny with alternate buds, and the stem is glabrous. However, the stem can sometimes be slightly pubescent. There are no major differences between the apical and lateral buds except for size, and they both have an imbricate arrangement of their bud scales. Sassafras is a highly aromatic tree that grows to be about 30 to 60 feet tall, and it can typically be found in forests, fields, and on roadsides. The most notable part of sassafras is probably its root, which used to be used to make sassafras tea and flavor root beer. If you cut the roots, it's extremely fragrant. However, the use of sassafras root to flavor food items was banned in the United States due to a chemical compound called saffron that is present in the tree. Saffron is also known to cause cancer in rats when used in large amounts. Alright, let's go ahead and scratch and sniff this awesome twig. So if we give it a scratch. It really does smell amazing. It smells kind of lemony, but most of all, what I think it smells like is Fruit Loops. I think it just smells so much like Fruit Loops, and if you don't believe me, you have to sniff it for yourself. Go find yourself a sassafras tree and sniff it for yourself. Uh, it is one of the best ones to identify by smell, just because it has such a unique smell. The smell of Fruit Loops. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed sniffing twigs with me. 
If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future videos or sniff some twigs yourself, be sure to comment below. I will see you all in my next video.